Yes, everybody, today we are looking at Pep's 3 2 4 1, in particular the role of John Stones. If you noticed over the last few weeks, his role has revolutionised, kind of sitting in that anchor role in possession. That is the key in possession. Out of possession, things are changing. Now, there is limitations to the match engine. I have done five tactics today with all little tweaks and variations. These are all going to be available for my patrons. As always, my tactics are available from patrons. Link in the description if you would like to get your hands on any of these tactics. Takes you across to the Patreon. If not, don't worry. I'm going to go through everything. Talk about the reasons why I've done these little tweaks. Everyone else, kind of like the attacking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you include Rodri, are kind of set in stone in their player instructions and stuff like that and their roles. It's just trying to get this variation. Okay, let's dive into it. Smash a like on today's video. That would be much appreciated because this has taken about eight, nine hours of work today. Going through, watching Man City and then trying to replicate it in the game and tweaking and changing and tweaking and changing. It's been a long day. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is from the Bayern Munich game. Essentially, this is what we're trying to recreate. Now... Ake is just out of pitch. Now, you see where the Heineken kind of goes off the screen. He's just kind of in that position there. And they're playing out with a back four, if you include Edison as the goalkeeper. I've had real struggles with the goalkeeper. So, we'll have a little chat about that in a bit. But, basically, there you go. There's the back four. And as you can see, Rodri and Stones acting as a double pivot. Now, that's in possession. Now, out of possession. The ball is just about to get turned over. So, if you can see, it's a 15 minutes, 35 screenshot. John Stones is right there. Highlighted, sat in the middle, that double pivot once again. I think that looks like Haaland coming towards the ball, loses the ball. Move it on eight seconds. The ball actually came out, I think this side to maybe, was it Kingsley Coleman or someone like that? I don't know, maybe actually Leroy Sane, sorry. And there you can see John Stones highlighted once again. He has now found a position getting back into that back four. So when there's a loss of possession, he doesn't still sit as like a three and a two. He get, jumps back in and then you have a flat, not a flat back four, but a back four. Yeah, a flat back four with Ake, Stones, Diaz and then um, a Kanji kind of filling in at right full back. And then when the other team has got controlled possession, they're building out from the back. As you can see here, 32 18. There's a double pivot there, but that is Rodri and Gundogan. You've got Grealish, Haaland, De Bruyne was pressing quite high, and Bernardo Silva. And then fast forward it on four seconds, they've broken the press. And as you can see, John Stones is set in as a right centre half. So it's going to be very difficult to try and recreate this. Obviously, if we dive into the game, when you have a tactic, this part is how the team shapes up out of possession and we need him to kind of drop in to make a centre half when there is a loss of possession. Now in possession you would say it looks something like this and then out of possession and then out of possession it goes to a back four. Now what I did try and do, this is one of the tactics. I'm not going to really show you any clips. I may show you a couple of minutes of it or maybe a minute of it. I think the game against Liverpool, he started as a right wing back and then inverted. Um, the other times, the last couple of games, he's come from centre half and then moved up. The right wing back, just inverted wing back, just doesn't do what we want it to do. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Still might be useful. I'm going to pack this in the tactics folder for everyone to use if they want to download it because it's handy. It's a nice little shape. It kind of does its job. You get into a back four nicely. It's just the role of the right wing back and what it actually does in possession when you're building out from the back. And then when it actually moves into the midfield, it's kind of a bit, maybe about a pass or two late. The ball's kind of then gone into this sort of like middle third and then it moves in and we need him to be in there from build up. Now, here is the, one of the first ones that we practiced. I did this for 45 minutes against Hoffenheim in the second half. Now, this is the one that, I think could have potentially worked if we could get John Stones to drop in just a little bit deeper. Now, um, I've done as a DM on defend. I don't think anything else, like a deep line playmaker, no. A halfback, no, because with a halfback, remember, in possession, a halfback would drop into that area there, and we don't want that. We want the opposite of that. We want him to drop in when we lose possession. So I've gone with a DM on defend. I did toy with the idea, and I did trial it a little bit, but it didn't really work of marking the left striker space. So going into the player instructions and just putting mark a position and seeing if that works. So that left sort of like half space where you maybe expect a left striker to work in, that didn't work. 
Here is a few highlights. Let's see how it looked in the match engine. So this is the first highlight. Now the reason, I forgot to say, the reason why we put a Kanji at right back and not to have built from a back three is because obviously if Stones has got a Kanji right behind him and it's a tight back three, there's absolutely no need for him to drop in. So the hope was that if we played a Kanji at right back, then there would be leave that little space between the left centre half and the right full back and it would leave then a natural position for Stones to drop back vertically. So that was the plan. Now this is the build up. I just keep an eye on him. See, really now here, as you could see, he doesn't need to be there. He ideally needs to be there. And he hasn't done it. He does it now, look. He's starting to do it. So there, we've got the back four. All right, which you think, brilliant, we've done it. And then as the player comes, can you see? He's just a little bit forgetful of his defensive duties and he's gone back in to make that double pivot. And as you can see now... He's actually got sucked out and look where the ball is travelling. If he was a centre-half and he stayed in that position, he would have been there. We scoop up with it and we're fine. The flip side of that, however, is that when we do have the ball, he's in the natural position to start with the three and the two. So there's your three with Ruben Diaz. We've got a Kanji uh, full-back on defence, sit narrower, so he's not going to get too wide in possession. And we've got the two. There is your two. Gundogan's actually come quite deep for it, but there is John Stones acting as like he would generally in build-up. He kind of holds his position as well, which is really good. And we're off. We've brought the press and we're off. Okay, so there's one of the little scenarios. Let me down in the comments, though. That scenario with this shape that I've set up with the Kanji at right fullback, that little gap for the right centre-half, what would you put Stones as? Let me know down in the comments. All right, the next little bit is the worry, a real worry, and we actually got very lucky because I think the goal was actually disallowed. Okay, so let's highlight him. Like, pretty perfect, apart from what is going on there. Who's that? Like, Rodri, Gundogan's on centre midfield and attack. Really, he should be up here. He should be here, and then Rodri should be in there. That's just FM. We can't do anything about it. Like, there's absolutely no need for him to be there. But anyway, so we play... Fantastic. Well, let's highlight John Stodes. He's exactly where you would expect him to be in this sort of like 3-2 build-up. We've kind of got it a little bit now with the space opening up. And we're playing. And we're off. We'll keep our eye on him. I think there is a loss in possession at some point. Here we go. Right. Just keep your eye on him as the ball switches over to this side. Now, obviously, he's going to get attracted to the ball a little bit because he's a DM. Now... If this was the John Stones that we saw against Bayern Munich, you'd expect him to go back into this position. This is what he was doing. In-game, he doesn't do it. He's been sucked towards the ball. Akanji's now got a big gap that he has to try and fill. He doesn't do it enough. As you can see, like John Stones. John Stones should be in there, shouldn't he? He doesn't do it. We've now got a challenge up. We win it. But then once again, he's gone chasing into that DM area. Even though I've got trigger pressed less often because I was wary of him going out and doing things like this. He's kind of completely abandoned his positioning. He's not a centre half. He's a DM in the game. And they're in and they actually score. It was disallowed for offside. So just something to think about if you're trying to get that 3-2 structure, kind of how it looks most realistically in build-up. That is probably the best scenario. But at the same time, out of possession, especially when there's a turnover, you've got that big problem of that hole not being filled. Right, I just thought I'd show you this one very quickly. This is the one where we're starting John Stones as a right back, and we're trying to just show you, I'm going to show you kind of what the inverted wing back does and the reasons why you can't really do it at all for this role. Okay, so just watch this. We've just won the ball. John Stones has actually picked up a loose ball in the six yard box, and we're playing. We're going to play it through till 6 12. 67 12 and as you can see he's kind of just staying as a right back and if we pause it there like if this was the three two builder that we were trying to create john stones just put a little screenshot out now he would be right in there all right and then just watch his movement as the ball then goes into this middle third and into the attacking third he then does it but it's too late. It's quite good in terms of a rest defence. So if you're wanting to make sure you don't get counted down the middle, 
it helps recycle possession a lot. Balls coming outside, having a double pivot, working the ball from side to side. You know, Bernardo Silva might cut back here, get the ball cut back. John Stones is a little pass back and then they can recycle to, to Rodri and Grealish out the other side. So it's good that way, but he just does it too late. Like he is perfect, but he does it too late. He does it after the build-up. He goes into that, that sort of like double pivot with Rodri after the build-up phase from the back, and it's not what we're trying to recreate. Okay, so another one we tried. We did a change in this one in the Fulham game. Another game we've actually played really well in all the tactics, mainly because of the attacking plays that we've obviously got available. But what we've done here is for the first half, we've played with one centre-half, two sitters. So Stones is doing that defensive midfield on defend, but two full-backs. Akanji and Ake, a fullback on defend with Sit Narrower, and we've got Ruben Diaz as the central defender. So not the left side, we've got him as a central defender. I just wanted to see how that would pan out. Now, this is kind of very similar to sort of like a, a Barcelona, Johan Cruyff kind of three at the back. Okay, so the problem that we get, if we just zoom out as best we can as this goal kick comes forward. Okay, we're very wide. Even though Ake has got Sit Narrow on, he's very, very wide. Really, he would be in here. We want him maybe another 10, 15 yards inside. And if you don't win the first ball, as you can see, Ruben Dias is coming to contest with Mitrovic. You can see there is Stones doing a DM roll, as you'd expect, not thinking about the gaps that have been caused by having us two fullbacks. And as you can see, there's a ball that goes straight through the middle. So then at half time, I thought, right, I'm going to have to change it. And we went to, we went to this one, which on the base of it looks good. You're going to probably get that really bet good 3-2 build up. But then the issue that we're going to potentially have with that is that there's no one really to cover these wide areas. Remember when there's a loss of possession, Man City go into that back four, spreading the play out. We're not going to get that. And then in the second half against Fulham, we had this problem. Okay, now uh, Fulham are breaking. Uh, they were playing a 4-2-3-1. Solomon is going to be, we'll keep our eye on it, he's going to be the goal scorer. Okay. Now, we have got Silva, does his work defensively pretty well. We haven't got him as an attacking midfielder, right? He's just playing on the right midfield. Inverted winger, on, wing, wing, inverted winger on attack. But what we're not wanting him to do is to end up being a, a right fullback. We don't want that. And the issue we get is that we're very narrow. Akanji, Ake's gone in to sort of like work and press Cabano. We've got Ruben Diaz and then we've got Akanji. Now, if... Bernardo Silva was playing as a right wing back. You'd expect him to be in here. Because he's playing as a winger, an inverted winger, he doesn't do his obvious defending. I don't want him to do that, by the way. That's not how I want him to do. But once again, because of the game, you know, Akanji's playing as a wide centre back. They only go wide in possession. He's still got way too narrow. There's no need for him to be that narrow. And our ball comes over the left hand side. To be fair to the guy, it's a decent finish. But. Just something to be aware of. I think you could probably get away with it. You could probably get away with it, depending on who you are. You could maybe think about playing with complete wing-backs, maybe, instead of wingers. But it's not how Manchester City obviously do, in particular when we then work on the attacking bit and the attacking third with Bernardo Silva and Grealish either side. So, there are all the errors. I think I've come up with a little bit of a solution. It's not perfect. By all means, it's not perfect. But this is what I've come up with. Here it is. It's... John Stone's playing as a libero. Okay, so we're going to go through the team piece by piece. Uh, player instructions as well, so you guys can copy along. This is what the tactic has generally done over the last number of games. We tweaked a little bit in here, like Sevilla, we played a dodgy tactic. But Man United, that was an absolute shocker, by the way. 2 nil up, and then Vegas came on and scored two goals against uh, when they were down to 10 men. Um but generally, this run here from Barcelona, Liverpool, Aston Villa, Everton, Brighton, they were all using this tactic. So, the idea is, now, I've put Edison as a goalkeeper on defend, and I'll tell you why. Because no matter what I put in the instructions in terms of playing out from the back, as you can see, in transition, I'm getting him to roll it out to the left fullback. If you do sweep a keeper on attack, he'll go long. Sweeper keeper on support, he was going along. Even sweeper keeper on defend when Diaz was dropping into really good, deep, wide positions to start a really good build-up phase. He occasionally would go long. 
and it was really doing me head in. So to get the sweet spot of him trying to do as he's bloody told and pass it short, goalkeeper on, obviously, defend was by far the best route of helping us to build out constantly from the back. So just something to be aware of. I think the natural thing with the sweeper keepers is that you think the player with the good with the feet and they, off, they obviously do, but... They kind of encourage, especially on a support and attack, like Edison kind of used to do a little bit more, is really hit those wide areas with those long passes. He does it, obviously still on a regular basis, but it just stops him from building out at the, from the back. Manchester City generally do build out from the back more than what he goes long, and it was frustrating me. So I've gone with that, and it's worked quite well. Right. Full back on defend, Akanji sit narrower and close down less just so he holds his position a little bit. Here we go, John Stones, Libero on attack. Now the reason why I've done this is because I was hoping that in possession, because we're rolling the ball out to Diaz, we're not asking him to get on the ball from the initial build-up. I was hoping that with the Libero, he would naturally go into that role a little bit quicker. He starts in there, we don't want that, we want that in there as like a three and a two. So I thought Libero on attack, he'll maybe push forward quicker if that ball then gets shifted out to Diaz when we were asking Edison to pass it out there. Full back on defend for Ake, no player instructions. And then uh, hold position, ball winning defender on cover for Diaz. I would also recommend, because I'll put a little screenshot up now, I had this screenshot. And at the same time, I had moved um, a Kanji over to a wide centre-back uh, on def on on defend as well um, and I had that scenario so I would potentially put a man marking job on a central striker for Diaz just to stop him from doing whatever the hell FM was dreaming up when they decided to have this in play in the match engine okay now Rodri's an interesting one I put him as DM on defend I just found with the deep line playmaker that I had for him to start that he was just going, like, sucking towards the ball. And when we were playing with the two, he was going across and going past John Stones. And he doesn't do that. When there's that double pivot in there, they generally stayed side by side. Obviously, if he's a single pivot, he'll go and do it. He was just kind of hogging the ball a little bit too much. So I've asked him to be a DM on defend, but I've asked him to take more risk. Obviously, a tremendous passer of the ball, spraying the passes, progressing the passes as well. So I thought, right, let's have him take him more risks. And it's been a nice little change. And it has worked really well. Now, right winger, inverted winger, on attack, roam from position, stay wider. Um, I've only done that for the Bernardo Silva. If, similar to the Grealish thing that we're going to talk about in a minute, if you're going to play like a Mares out there, I would even have him as a winger, just so he keeps his width. The Gundogan role, I've been playing Calvin Phillips there last couple of weeks because Gundogan's a bit got injured. I put him as a central midfielder on attack. I want him up here alongside De Bruyne as much as possible. Can he get back into a middle? Remember that sort of like four that they had with Grealish, Phillips, Rodri and Silva uh, against Bayern Munich. Can we get that four of them back in? So that's why I've got him there instead of there. But central midfielder on attack. We want him. He's best, isn't he, when he's making them little runs into the penalty area. Now, Jack Grealish. I've kind of spoke about this various times on tactic videos and in my saves that... Inverted wingers, they just come in a little bit now. And Jack Grealish hugs the touchline as much as possible. And because he's right-footed, because he has a player trait of cutting in from both wings, he will naturally come inside. I would potentially do that with Mares as well because he hugs the touchline as much as possible. He'll obviously have a player trait to cut in as well. So something to think about. I keep saying I'm going to do a video on it to help explain it a little bit better and put up some average positions. I promise I'll try and do it in a couple of weeks. And then... Kevin De Bruyne, as we saw, he actually pressed the centre-halves a lot in the Bayern Munich game. I think they were playing... Did they play with a back three? A kind of a lopsided back three because they had Pavard, De Ligt and uh, the other centre-half... Um, Upa Makano, who had a nightmare in build-up. So he often pressed the left centre-half. He often pressed, ended up pressing De Ligt. So we've got him in this right sort of like half space. Take more risk, cross more often, roam from position. And then Haaland, I've just got him as a poacher. I had advanced forward and I just thought, he doesn't do that. He just He's literally just a poacher, isn't he? So we've got him on as a poacher. Positive mentality, um, fairly wide. I've been tweaking these. I've been tweaking the tempo. If you're finding you've just been a little bit sluggish in possession, just do the higher tempo. I've been flipping in that between games. Be clever with it. If you're struggling to break teams down, I always find turning up the tempo. Some of the tougher games, Manchester United, I just thought, let's just control the game as much as we possibly can. 
Um, and then at 2-0, I decided to go for the juggler. I went attacking and up the tempo. And they scored two goals in Manchester United. So just something to think about. I was just hoping that would help us retain possession a little bit better. Work into the box, obviously. Play out of defence, obviously. We want that to try and create that build-up as much as possible. Counter-press. No counter-attack. We do it. We've scored some wonderful goals when we've quickly won the ball in midfield and transitioned quickly. But in terms of Edison, I haven't decided to go with that. Let's try and encourage that build-up out from the back. Roll it out and roll it out to Diaz, the left centre-half, to try and recreate, sorry, that 3-2 build-up. If the ball's going to Stones, we're going to start with that fourth, very similar to what Brighton do. We don't want that. And then out of possession, high defensive line, not very high, with a high press, more often trigger press, prevent goal, uh, prevent shot distribution. I feel with these a little bit as well. I think there's an argument to potentially... Depending on which scenario you're doing, trapping inside had worked really well. When balls were coming into this area here where we had De Bruyne, Gundogan and Rodri, we were turning the ball over. So a nice little one, perhaps turn that on and help you win the ball in transitions, playing out from the back, any dodgy passes, loose passes. Very similar, I think, to Upamancano, error for like, was it the third goal for City, I think, in the second half? Very similar to that, we were creating those sorts of opportunities. And obviously, we've got then the opportunity to quickly break with Haaland absolutely lethal when there's a little bit of green grass for him to run into. All right, that is the shape. Let's go and see how it looked in the match engine. Right, so how does the libero look in build-up? Now, generally, from the build-up, it starts with a back four, which is not what we want. He does then straight away, as the ball then kind of goes into the middle third, into that attacking, sort of like the attacking place, he then joins the game as sort of like a sitting midfielder. As you can see, he kind of holds his run when, it's, when, it, when the ball is then in the back, he then drops in to come as another centre half, which is kind of not what we want, but at the same time, he's moving positions. Now, when we had the DM doing it, as him a DM, he wasn't moving back as a centre-half. Remember, he's a centre-half that moves forward in possession. Unfortunately, the game just doesn't allow us to do it in build-up. He's done it now. If anything, a little bit gung-ho. We did have Ruben Diaz on defend and dribble more, so his position really should be a little bit deeper. Akanji's playing as a right-back. a right back. Ake's playing at the left-back. But he's in a better position now. In a position, look, there's the double pivot that you'd expect him to be in, in these attacking areas. But that's what we get. And as you can see, he knows then there's a turnover of possession. He's going to get back in very much those screenshots that I showed you at the start of the ep uh, start of the video. Look, he would be back in here. He wouldn't be in here out of possession. He would be back in to make a back four. And as you can see, the one, two, three, four. There is your back four. And then against Manchester United, just watch the build-up that we get. So Laporte is playing as the left centre-half. Diaz is playing as sort of like the right centre-half slash uh, right back. There is John Stones already stepping forward, look. So we've kind of got it there. I don't know why Rodrigo is so deep, but it's just what the game does. And he's kind of off. He's off now and he's spreading the play. So he's getting, once again, there you go. There's your positions with Stones in a really good position in terms of rest defence. And it helps us, does help us move. That ball could have quite easily gone to, obviously, John Stones, and it does help us move possession. See, when he thought there was initial loss of possession, he goes straight back in to make a centre-half. So we're kind of getting there the role of when there is that loss of possession, he will move from that DM slot back into centre-half because you're asking him to be a libero. But the sticking point with that is that they still don't build up with that 3-2. Unfortunately, it's impossible to get 100% in the game, or even 80% in the game, but I've just given you five examples. What if you could potentially do, now if you want in the most solid structure, probably the one with the inverted wing-back, John Stones did do it, I think, against Liverpool, where he started his inverted wing-back. I'm hoping something down the line, they will change the role of the inverted wing-back, because because teams such as Manchester United are doing it, even, um, obviously, Arsenal are doing it, it's not so much the game, the game sees it as they move into the middle of midfield after the ball has progressed through the lines. And what Man United, what Arsenal are doing, Zinchenko, even wan is doing it, Manchester City even now with John Stones, that right wing back, they move into there in build-up and we don't have that in the game yet. Fingers crossed, FM24, um, something might happen along those lines. All right, guys, so that is it. I hope you've enjoyed that tactic. The tactics work really well. My suggestion would be 
to do the libero on. By all means, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What kind of tweaks could you kind of get to make that John Stones role as close as you possibly can? As I said, that starting him as a DM, he thinks like a DM. He doesn't think like a centre-half. And what we've seen in the clips that I've seen so far, when there's that loss in possession, John Stones moves from that DM slot straight back into centre-half to make that flat back for. All right, guys, something different. I hope you've enjoyed it. For you Patreons, there is now five tactics over on the Patreon for you and for you to go and get stuck into. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Tactics week on the channel tomorrow is Jabi Alonso. And Thursday, we have got Jürgen Klopp, a 3-5-2. What would if Liverpool went and changed to a 3-5-2? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.